I definitely don't think I'm going to be able to do 20 reps of this, but that's why we're here. Raz back, raz back! Dva! Ishu! Go, 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 go! Rack! Ugh! Nice. That's it. Come on. Let's go, Tom. Come on, buddy. All right, I'm here with Charlie, absolute animal, power lifter, turn to doing everything right now. Uh, so what do we just do with the barbell, kind of maybe some cues behind it, what we're trying to think about in target as we're doing the movement. Okay, uh, so what we did today were uh, stiff-legged deadlifts. Um, these have a focus on a controlled eccentric. So basically, we want to uh, keep that back arch the whole entire time and not let your back kick over at all and try to keep the load on the hamstrings as much as possible. Um, so today we did about two sets of eight to 10 and I think that's uh, good for now. And as the weeks progress, you might want to add a set here and there and uh, just go by feel. So one of the biggest things you were telling me to do was arch my back. Yes. So what was the methodology behind that uh, for this exercise? So when you arch your back the whole time, uh, you're not actively uh, put it into flexion, so it doesn't take over in the movements. So it's because once your back starts rounding at, a, at, at the bottom of the deadlift and you want to pull up on the bar, your hamstrings tend to uh, not have majority of the load at that time because your back's in flexion. So you're trying to, your body's actively trying to put that back in neutral or extension. So that's why we want to keep that back in extension the whole time. Nice. Well, thanks, man. So what's next on tap? Uh, next is uh, some death by hex squats. <laughs> what? What'd you say? You'll see death oh, by hex squats. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, but uh, thanks, dude. Let's get on to the next one. Come on. <laughs> We're here with the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Mike as well. So, Mike, what, what is this death by hack squat thing going on right now? A nasty rumor that's been going around that people have died hack squatting for high reps. Nonsense, my lawyers tell me to say. Uh, Charlie here is warming up for the hack squat. We're gonna do, uh, gee whiz, we're gonna do some sets. <laughs> sets of starting out at around 20 reps and letting fatigue oh, take dear, us down yeah. to around 10. Well, you know, four or five sets here. And uh, we'll see if Joey's still alive. <laughs> you heard it first. We'll see if I make it. This may be the last video ever to come out on the YouTubes. So the hack squats, we train quads twice a week currently. And we do, oh, roughly five to 10 total quad sets per session twice a week. So that's about, oh, 10 to 20 sets per week for quads. And hack squat is a big stable movement for us for quads. Uh, it's really good for quad stimulus. It's very overloading, but it's not terribly axially fatiguing. It doesn't compress your spine a ton, not as much as squats. So squats are great, but what we like to do is do hack squats first sometimes. We have hack squats in this cycle, this mesocycle, this sort of month and a half of training. We have hack squats twice on both of our leg days. The first leg day has them heavier, so it's in the five to 10 rep range, oh, right around two reps from failure on average, something like that. And then today, so that was Tuesday, Friday, today's Friday, we have hack squats again, but this time they're in the 10 to 20 rep range, which is brutal. So we usually start towards the top end, like for example, I did uh, 18 reps on my first set today, about two uh, reps from failure, and then slowly dropping down the reps, not on purpose, but we keep going two reps from failure and the fatigue catches up to us. So we're doing that. Today we did hack squats for four sets. Um, 
if we don't get super duper sore and if our performance is stable next Friday, we'll probably add a set to hack squats or to some other movement. So that way we keep putting a little bit more weight on the bar every single week. We add sets when we're adequately recovered. So we start at sort of a minimum effective volume, just a few sets with relatively light weight. And then we slowly work up to heavier weight just by five or 10 pounds per session, add a set here and there until we're doing the very highest volume, highest intensity, almost all the way to failure at the end. And then we deload either pick some new exercises, raise the average weights and keep the same exercises and repeat that entire process. Definitely don't think I'm gonna be able to do 20 reps of this, but that's why we're here. Really good. See what happens. Take rest. <coughs> Two when you're ready. For a deload, you're talking about deload. Uh, during your deload, do you take off from training, or do you still like to train through that deload and just play around with intensity, volume? Exercise sure. And so we almost always train through the deload, but usually we reduce the number of training sessions. So right now, my training partner Charlie and I we're doing nine training sessions per week. So, so there's quite a few two a days. Uh, on a deload week, we'll probably do like four or five total training sessions because we'll combine stuff. Usually what that means is in the first half of the deload week, we keep roughly, roughly the same amount of weight on the bar, but we have the sets by half or by, by half and by two, right? So if we're doing four sets working, now we'll do two. And oftentimes we'll even have the reps. So sets of 10 turn into sets of five. It's still a pretty decent stimulus, enough to conserve muscle, but not enough to add any fatigue and then so the fatigue goes down. Towards the latter half of the week, we're doing it half the weight as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing 200 pounds in an exercise, you'd be doing 100. You were doing sets of 10, you're doing sets of five, you were doing four sets of 10, now you're doing two, but it's the easiest workout in the world. We combine a bunch of our sessions, take more off days, really try to relax. Our cumulative fatigue at the end of a mesocycle is up here. After the deload, it's all the way down here. And then we start again, building slowly, accumulating volume intensity and relative effort until we have super high fatigue at the end. We drop it, rinse and repeat. All right, so then tell us what we did over on this little torture device and then yeah. what followed that. Sure, so uh, we've been doing some leg extensions in our mesocycle this time. We don't usually do them, but uh, since this is very highly quad focused, we just did one set of leg extensions, but we did it in sort of uh, rest pause style or Maya rep style. We do like a set of uh, 10 to 20 reps. We rest three to five seconds and then crank out another set of three to five, like three mini sets brutal as hell. The thing is, leg extensions just aren't that overloading to most of us, they're not that challenging. So just straight sets of like 10, even close to failure, you have to do a bunch of them to get a really good effect. We like to really go for the metabolite burn on this one. So the drop sets or the Maya rep sets where you don't change the weight, you just rest a little bit. They're brutal, they do a good job. Let's go, quality reps. Yeah. 
this. After that, we did walking lunges, and those are tough, and then we superset them to bodyweight squats. So your quads are so messed up, the walking lunges hit your glutes a little bit, they hit your quads, sort of finish them off. These are for higher reps, sets of 20 to 30 usually. And then right after you're done, you do a set in the squat. Sometimes it's with weight, sometimes without. This time uh, it was without weight. Um, or these guys did it without weight, I did it with just as much weight as I was lunging. And you do a set of five to 10 reps, and this is basically your quads are almost at failure anyway, and then you push them closer and closer to failure through the whole set. Super brutal, but none of this is by accident, it's all planned. So last week we did the same thing, just a little less weight and a few less reps maybe, and a little bit less uh, total set number. Mm -hmm. And we sort of escalate as our body gives us the green light that adaptation is occurring, and the fatigue is not excessive. How do we know that? We're matching our reps week to week. If you match your reps and increasing numbers of weight, or if you're able to add reps in your uh, relative effort, it's still like the same. If you're still two reps in reserve, but you could do 20 reps instead of 18, that means you're still gaining strength or at least maintaining it. That means you can inject more volume into the program. <laughs> inject volume. So <laughs> if you inject more volume into the program, that means you can have more of a muscle growth stimulus, but still not overreach to where you're not recovering. You're not exceeding your maximum recoverable volume, and you're still making really good gains. So we slowly add in as our body is recovering until it can no longer recover at that point that's when you deload so a few tips for you folks on leg training first is you don't have to take your ego and push it out the door like people say but you have to put your ego into the right stuff about leg training your ego should be attached to the idea of consistency into the idea of challenging yourself with the difficult exercises don't just do all leg extensions and machine crap do barbell free weight stuff do hack squats leg presses brutal shit and attach your ego to range of motion. Deep stretch on the hamstrings and quads grows them like fucking crazy. So take your ego and take it away from how much weight you're lifting and put it into doing good technique, good range of motion, matching reps, coming in day after day, week after week, getting a little stronger, doing a little bit more volume, full range of motion, challenge yourself, and after a while, you'll have much bigger legs. Is getting stronger, putting more weight on the bar a part of the equation? Absolutely, but only if your technique is good. You're not bullshitting yourself with range of motion. As soon as you start cutting your reps short to lift more weight, you've officially cashed out of the workout. You're not 
nobody knows what you're training anymore. Maybe you don't know what you're training anymore. Now you're training the ego instead of the muscles. So take your ego and tell yourself, I'm proud of doing full range of motion. I'm proud of being a highly technical lifter. I'm proud of being consistent. And when I don't feel like doing another set, like today we started the workout, I look at Charlie, we looked at our sheet and we go, okay, We've calculated that approximately four sets of hack squats is what it's going to take to get us where we need to go today. It's just an elevation above what we did last time, which is three sets. Charlie and I didn't want to do four sets of fucking hack squats for sets of 10 to 20 reps. Fuck that. Charlie looked at me. He was like, fuck, three sets. We did three sets last time. We barely walked out. Four sets was what was on paper. It was what's theoretically a good idea. So if that's where we attach our ego to because we're not going to fucking bitch out and not do the four sets. So we did the fucking four sets. Was it fun? Yeah, hell yeah. Like, you know, like Joker kind of fun <laughs> where you don't know if you're crazy or not. Nasty. But that's what it takes. So challenge yourself, but challenge yourself in a way that's appropriate with technique, good full range of motion, be consistent. Don't skip leg days. Being an egotistical lifter is all about making sure you're on the money every single time, not about hack half squatting 600 pounds or some shit like that he took that one out of the ballpark uh so i haven't done a workout like that in a long ass time it felt good it kind of took me back to my bodybuilding days you know getting after it. there's been so much blood put into these legs i'm gonna have a fun time driving home getting out of my car probably cramping face planning and then maybe the next video i'll have some scars on my face uh but can't thank these guys enough thank you so much all these guys over here no, I don't uh, think those other guys. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, fuck those guys. Uh, but uh, Dr. Mike, where can we find you at? Um, at RP Strength on Instagram is the company I help run, and at RP D R M I K E RP Dr. Mike. Um, and also, you'll be able to see some of this training footage very soon on the Renaissance Periodization YouTube. So just go on YouTube and type in RP Strength, the Renaissance Periodization, figure out how to spell that. The algorithm usually fills in the rest for you. Uh, see us there, and uh, you can see Joe and, and uh, ourselves doing a nasty leg workout here in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.